Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Jessica at Pretty Prints and Paper and today we're going to talk a little bit about personal development and how you can weave in the things that make you unique into your planning system. So let's get started. Today I'm going to be decorating my Passion Planner Pro using a kit from one of my favorite shops these days, Let's Plan It. I love how they include all of these different elements into the kit and I use them for both my Passion Planner and my Bullet Journal. And matching along with these colors from Arteza twine markers, a brush for highlights and a pen for adding detail. Along with brush calligraphy needs fulfilled by Tombow Fudenosuke, I have both a soft and hard tip. Now, when I come up with my own sense of planner piece, there's a lot of things that we need to take into account to find a system and a flow and an approach that works for us. Honestly, if there's anything that's terrifying and liberating about finding uh, your planner system or even bullet journaling for the first time is that you get to choose from so many different things. And there's a reason why everybody under the sun released their own planner system this last summer, because frankly, we're all tired of being told what to do and we are rubbing up against the structures that we are given and we want to find something that fits with our context, that resonates with us and our unique approach. And I think that is some of the beauty of it. And at yet at the same time, we hit against what we see as popular culture and popular approaches to planning. And when it doesn't work for us, we tend to blame ourselves or think like, oh, I'm falling short. When really there are so many things that make us unique and that means that our approach will also be unique, which also means we're not going to see that popularized on every social media platform. So here's some of the tools that I've used to help me make sense of some of that. Now, I love per like personal development stuff. I'm a leadership teacher, and so these things are my bread and butter. I can talk about them all day. One of them is the Myers-Briggs, which is, you know, those four letters. I am an ENFJ, and if you're curious about your type, I will include links and stuff below, but I love 16 personalities. And um, along with that, I also talk a lot about our top five strengths from Gallup Strengths Quest, as well as Enneagram. I am personally a two wing three, which is a helper with a wing of an achiever, and a little bit of that astrology energy where I am a Sagittarius sun with a Libra rising. Now, if this all just sounds like a bunch of woo woo gobbledygook, just just stick along with me. I promise it it makes sense. I think we love these assessments because it helps explain some of our personal quirks. They may not be right all the time. And so even if you don't buy into things like Myers-Briggs or um, astrology, what I appreciate about those tests is that it allows us the peace of mind of seeing that there are so many different ways to live in this world. And that just because you do it this way doesn't mean that there's not a million other approaches. And it's one, freeing because you can be compassionate to what others are doing because you know that they're doing what works for them. But it also allows me to be compassionate with myself because I realize that I don't have to do things the way that other people do them and that there's nothing wrong with me for going about it the way that I do. And specifically, there are a couple things that come to mind when I think about this. And one of them is goal planning. A lot of goal hustlers out there, it's really amazing that they can be so disciplined in their everyday, but that is not me. And actually, if you look into any of the stuff in my life, it's in it's in my chart that discipline and that rigidity um, does not help me thrive. And being able to just embrace that, that I'll never have like a super strict morning routine um, to get me toward these like super concrete goals, that these things are much more fluid in my life and much more intuitive and emergent. Embracing that has allowed me to feel a lot more free in my planning and stop beating myself up for not having like a huge set of morning routine items or evening routine items, but that I can flow through what I know is important for my well-being and that those kinds of things are more intuitive for me than um, a list of the things I have to do every single day. 
And that is also tied into some of my strengths. I have um, a ranger, futuristic, and um, maximizer in my top five. And you can kind of guess at the names, but it means that I am much more skilled and if I, it's really easy for me to think of an optimal way to arrange something whether it's in my schedule or it's in my planner. And that means that I don't actually have to be tied to a super um, set in stone schedule either. And that's why I love the Google Calendar because you can kind of make things shift last minute. And it's easy for me to know, okay, if these are the things that are immovable, what are the different ways that I can, you know, reprioritize the time that I do for tasks, the time that I spend on this, and it flows really easily in my mind to get everything done. I also have positivity in my top five, which at first I thought that means I'm a positive person, which um, a little bit. And that's also connected to my being a Sagittarius, which is an optimistic sign and believes in striving and, and being the best that I can be. What that also means is that with my achiever focus, I like to do a whole lot of stuff. I like to be involved in a lot of opportunities and um, connection times with friends and my positivity makes me think that I can get a lot more done in the time that I have than I actually can. And that gets me in a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> um, and because I always want to be in service to others, that's my two on the Enneagram, the helper, I always want to reprioritize my life to get things done for other people. And through your Enneagram, it, it might reveal to you some of the pitfalls in planning where for twos and threes, we really want to orient ourselves to action and helping other people, which means that for us, setting boundaries and saying no and minimizing our time is going to be really important. Whereas people who are, who test more in like the sevens, which are the enthusiasts, they, they're danger zone might be like, oh, I'm spending too much time jumping around to different things or I'm going to all these new things and not maintaining the important structures in my life. There are the fives, the thinkers, that boundaries are not a problem because they're very protective of their energy and their time, which means that maybe they're their focus should be finding time um, planned in for connection and reaching out to other people. So it's really interesting because you see a lot of like the planner community talk about certain trends of like self-care and um, setting boundaries and stuff when really that is an issue for some of us and not all of us. And Knowing these kinds of elements about my personality have helped me prioritize what I'm trying to do in my planner, how I set it up, what sections will be important, etc, etc. There are also a lot of nuances in the Myers-Briggs that um, help me understand how I process information. A lot of that centers around whether you're an extrovert or an introvert and to what extent. Like, as an extroverted big picture thinker that decides by feeling and can create some external structure as an ENFJ. I have a really strong sense about what others are feeling and what others need, but don't have a very strong sense of what I need internally. This you can see the connections to being a helper and an achiever that I'm very external focused. So having a journal and a planner to reflect my thoughts that back to me to look at my trackers and see the patterns from an external source is a really cool tool actually. And then for folks with types that have an NF in the middle, that means that we really want to know the purpose as to what we're doing, why we're doing it. Whereas other people who have an S instead of an N as the second letter are very much more able to be literal and looking at things that are specific concrete steps and that is very different than me but understanding that helps me better approach my goal setting knowing that if I need to have a purpose then I'm going to make sure that I really understand why I'm setting a specific goal and why I'm approaching it. 
So a little bit of the woo-woo, but the mark of a Sagittarius as a fire sign is that, you know, we don't really like rules and being able to understand that I don't have to have a locked down system and that's why probably I love the bullet journal right is that it flows with me I decide the rules I decide the structure and what is important and not somebody else and being able to embrace that has been a lot of fun and why I've stuck with that system for longer than anything else. The bullet journal system is also really rooted in a lot of philosophical striving to be the best that you can be, which also really appeals to the Sagittarius, as well as the ENFJ who believes the best in other people. Whether or not you believe in a lot of these personal development tools, I think they are great ways to understand more of who we are, why we are, and hopefully it helps you get some insight into what might be driving your planning styles and preferences, and how you can be a little bit more forgiving and and embrace what makes you unique and in your planner approach. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and give me a comment below. What are some of those personal tendencies that drive the way that you approach planning that's unique to you? I would love to hear in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or share or like, whatever. I just hope that you enjoy it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.